Imagine there are two prisoners who committed a crime together. There's some evidence against them, but only enough to land them in jail for one year. An interrogator tells each of them the following. If you testify against the other person, you will go free, and the other person will be in jail for three years. If they testify against you, the reverse will happen. If you both testify against each other, you will each receive two years in prison. This image is a payoff matrix. Let's call the not testify option as cooperating with the other prisoner, and the testify option as defecting against the other prisoner. Being selfish, they only care about their own prison sentence. Being rational, they realize that no matter what the other person does, they will receive less time in prison if they testify. So, both testify against each other, and they each receive two years in prison. It's sad that they won't cooperate, but it's not unrealistic. For instance, have you ever chosen not to help some stranger who needed help because you had places to be and you knew you'd never see that stranger again? Let's look at a happier payoff matrix. You're on a game show, you're playing with someone, but you don't know who, and you'll never meet that person. Both of you want to make some money. The payoff matrix is that if you both cooperate, you each get $2,000. If one cooperates and one defects, the cooperator gets $0 and the defector gets $3,000. And if you both defect, you each get $1,000. You're a selfish rational agent, so knowing that no matter what your opponent does, defecting will give you more money, you choose to defect. That's fair. But what if instead of playing this game once, you play this game a hundred rounds against the same opponent? Well, then you both cooperate, right? I mean, it'd be stupid to defect for a hundred rounds straight, getting only half the money you could be getting, right? But that's exactly what happens, and the reason is backward induction. Let's say you both cooperate for 99 rounds and you reach the hundredth round. Suddenly, there's tension in the air. You both realize that your current situation is just like a single round prisoner's dilemma, where defecting gives you more money, no matter what the other person does. So you both defect on the hundredth round. But if you're both rational people, you realize in advance that both of you will defect in the 100th round. In a sense, the 99th round becomes the actual last round. But if the 99th round is a new last round, then the 99th round is also like a single round prisoner's dilemma, then you both defect. The logic keeps on going, and the result is that you both defect for all 100 turns. That's unfortunate. One of the primary purposes of game theory is to model real-life interactions, but humans cooperate in repeated interactions all the time. So what gives? Suppose you're on the same game show, but your opponent is selected randomly from a pool of 10 other players. Of those players, 9 are like you, selfish rational agents. The other player is an angel who has a reputation that they will cooperate the first round and will continue to cooperate as long as their opponent does. You will play 100 rounds against a single opponent. What happens? If you defect every round, your expected reward is $100,200. If you pretend to be an angel, your expected reward is $109,100, which is larger. The existence of an angel causes everyone to cooperate, which leads to better outcomes for everyone. So, for your good and the good of everyone else, be like an angel. Start off nice and never betray first.